this week, come with us as we journey to Pleasant Prospect to explore Hibiscus Heights, a colonial style villa that has everything you'll need for a wonderful holiday experience. We'll show you more in the next half hour. But first, here's a look at our top stories. I'm Davia Chambers, and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Young Tobagonians have been recognized for their positive contribution to the island's development. Tobago celebrates World Food Day with a month of activities in October, and later, Junior Chamber International is inspiring positive change at its annual national convention. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. Part of the charm of Hibiscus Heights is the fact that it sits on an old plantation ridge. Even before you set foot on the property, it's warm and inviting. Hibiscus Heights is owned by Gloria and Michael Wormsley and has been in operation for the past 10 years. So today we start off on a positive note. Young Tobagonians were recently recognized for their positive contributions in various social fairs in the past year. We reveal the big winners in this report. Junior Chamber International was the biggest winner at the Tobago Youth Awards 2017. The event honored young Tobagonians, youth mentors, and youth organizations for their social contributions in the past year. JCI grabbed two of the three awards for organizations, Most Outstanding Youth Organization and Most Effective Youth Program or Project. The third went to Most Improved Youth Organization, El Instituto de Idioma. Carol Boyce got the Youth Mentor Award. The other awardees included Farouk Rajman for Agriculture, Arel Williams, Media, Rene Baird, Health and Wellness, Rianne Moore, Youth Service, Kanice Murray, Entrepreneurship, Youth Leader Dexter Wilson and Kashif Wilson, Performing Arts. Celicia Guy earned two awards, Youth Triumph and Education. But the intention is for the impact of the event to go beyond recognizing the island's youth standouts. The Tobago Youth Awards is just one medium used to celebrate and recognize the achievement and potential of youth. But more needs to be done. It is not enough to say that young people are the future and not make them an active participant in shaping this future. In the coming year, the department intends to engage all sectors of society, both private and public, in the development of a Tobago Youth Development Strategy. On the night, the new Tobago Youth Council was also installed. The Youth Council represents youth organizations from across the island. Its main role is to coordinate and facilitate youth activities. This award ceremony is indeed an important mark for youth development and simultaneously the reinstallation of the Tobago Youth Council demonstrates how important the council is to the landscape of Tobago and the progress of all youths on the island and globally. The Tobago Youth Awards was hosted by the Tobago House of Assemblies Department of Youth Affairs at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort. I'm Kern DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Hibiscus Heights is a self-catering sea view villa. It's mere steps away from Grafton Beach, as well as a selection of restaurants, bars, and just about anything else you may need. Now this. Tobago recently observed World Mental Health Day by creating more awareness of mental health issues in the workplace. Officers from the Tobago Regional Health Authority's Mental Health Unit met with employees to tell them how they can contribute to a better environment for mental health. More in this report. On average, we spend about one-third of our day at work, and a stressful environment can affect our well-being, especially our mental health. Employers who support employee wellness and mental health care generally benefit from improved productivity. So, for World Mental Health Day 2017, under the theme Mental Health in the Workplace, the Tobago Regional Health Authority hosted outreach sessions at various divisions within the Tobago House of Assembly as well as schools on the island. The TRH's mental health unit is helping THA employees understand the connection between the mind and the body. If you're stressed, of course, what's, what's the evidence of that? 
would be the physical symptoms. All right, so the thoughts are there. What the thoughts are there that are disturbing you? You're going to see the express in the emotion. Hmm? So if I'm angry, you're going to see the, 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 the expression there. You're going to see the emotion come out in the words and also eventually in the behavior. The more common mental illnesses that surface at the office include bipolar disorder, depression, schizophrenia, and anxiety disorder. A recent World Health Organization or WHO study shows that depression and anxiety disorders cost the global economy US $1 trillion each year in lost productivity. But there's a difference between experiencing a temporary phase and being mentally ill. The difference between just going through an occasional temporary phase and having an actual mental illness is the severity the frequency and the intensity with which you experience these things. It's important for all employees to know how they can manage stress at the workplace. Self-care and self-awareness. You have to take care of you. You have to love you. All right? You have to know your limit. You don't know much thing you could juggle at one time. And that's something you could normally handle, but that these are you just can't handle it. And you don't know yourself. World Mental Health Day was celebrated on October 10th. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Gloria and Michael Wormsley were always fascinated by the idea of contributing to Tobago's tourism industry. That's why they purchased the property where Hibiscus Heights now stands. Even though they're based in Canada, they spend much of the year right here in Tobago. From tourism to education now, as much is being done to boost the sector, especially on the island. With that in mind, education officials toured two schools where they met with teachers and administrators. Here's Omudara Mills with the details. Schools in Tobago will soon have the chance to vie for the title Best All-Round School. It's a new initiative being introduced to strengthen the island's education system. It was announced at the Mariah Government Primary School during a school tour by officials of the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy and the Ministry of Education. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles, who is also Education Secretary, announced some criteria for the award. Linkages to the community, partnership, volunteerism and so on would, would, would take precedence, priority in respect of gaining the top prize. And of course, the net improvement of your school as you follow scrupulously your school development plan would also be taken into consideration. Mariah Government is one of the top primary schools on the island. It has close ties with the community and culture of the village. So it's not hard to find pupils who can show you how to do the brush back a dance synonymous with the Mariah Old Time Wedding. They can also demonstrate their abilities on the steel pan. The best all-round prize will be for both primary and secondary schools. It will look at areas such as academic excellence, discipline and volunteerism. The initiative should begin in the near future. Education officials continue to carry out joint school visits in Tobago to foster a more collaborative relationship among the ministry, the education division and the schools. On this occasion, the team also visited the Mason Hall Secondary School. So the purpose of this visit today is to connect with you, the students here at Mason Hall Secondary to really behold the persons that they make policy decisions for. And also to hear from your teachers, because at some point we will recess to your staff room where they will engage in conversation with your teachers and hear about their experiences and also their needs. The teams also met privately to discuss various issues impacting education in Tobago. Officials are hoping these meetings and tours will result in improved policies and bring out the best in both teachers and students. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago.
We have to take a break, but when we return, Tobago celebrates World Food Day throughout October. Don't go anywhere. Let's talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Now, Hibiscus Heights Villa offers five spacious apartments and one cozy cottage with an enclosed deck that ensures your privacy. The property sleeps a maximum of 18 people comfortably. We take you from Pleasant Prospect now to the Scarborough Library facility to celebrate World Food Day with the rest of Tobago. This year's event highlighted the importance of food production and food security on the island. Here are the details. Tobago is doing more with less, and the change in format for World Food Day 2017 celebrations is evidence of this. The usual two-day exhibition and competition was replaced by this mini-exhibition at Gardenside Car Park. Patrons still came out to sample and purchase food and other products from our local farmers, agro-processors, and entrepreneurs. This was just one event in a month-long series of activities to highlight the importance of World Food Day. The Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries has shifted from the usual format and have redesigned World Food Day 2017 to a month's activities due to the present economic challenges we are experiencing. The activities throughout this month are important and we recognize the global observance in the fight against world hunger. The activities include seminars on crop and livestock farming and agro-processing at Blenheim, as well as live demonstrations at the Luido Nursery. The activities are in keeping with this year's theme, Change the Future of Migration, Invest in Food Security and Rural Development. One way of ensuring food security is through technology. If we have to sustain our, um, our culture and sustain food security, we need to invest in our, in our use. And one way of doing that is to invest in technology. You know, most of the youth now don't want to do any hard work like we have done in the past. So we need to invest in technology. Other World Food Day activities include farmers' markets in the east and west of the island, various school competitions, and open days at Goldsboro and the Kendall Farm School. Those who attended the opening ceremony were encouraged to educate themselves and others on the benefits of eating locally produced food. Investment in food security should include things like a buy local, eat local campaign. We should educate our children, especially in fact, our population, and especially our children, in, on the nutritional values of our local food. You know, most of our children right now, they, they, they prefer the, the, the foreign food to our local food. So we need to let them know uh, what the nutritional values of our local food uh, are, and let them, you know, change their eating habits. The activities are being spearheaded by the Division of Food Production, Forestry, and Fisheries. They are collaborating with other key agriculture organizations. The series will end with a walk against hunger and a tree planting ceremony. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Hibiscus Heights Villa is ranked by TripAdvisor as number three of 98 specialty lodgings in Tobago and number one in the Black Rock area. For the past two years, it's also been awarded a certificate of excellence by TripAdvisor. And speaking of excellence, there's a day observed worldwide that focuses on empowering young girls to achieve by highlighting issues of inequality and the discrimination they face. Tobago also commemorated the occasion with a series of events for young students. Here's more. Every day, girls around the world fight for freedom. Freedom from war zones, freedom from exploitation, freedom from famine, persecution, and sexual abuse. This year, Tobago joined the rest of the world in giving girls a voice. The Choice Foundation hosted a panel discussion for secondary school girls around the island to freely express themselves on issues that affect them most. 
We have invited secondary school girls to participate and discuss issues that are affecting them. We have a panel and we'll work with them today. Those concerns are going to be dealt with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So we'll use it to kind of evaluate how they think, what they do, what makes them tick, and we'll take it from there. They would not be left out. The Tobago Library Services also hosted secondary school girls at a development workshop entitled The Beauty of Wellness. The workshop focused on the four main pillars of wellness, physical, mental and emotional, social and intellectual, and spiritual. Every link is significant and necessary. You spend a lot of time at school, you spend some time at home, you go on the social media, you go to classes, you eat, you do the physical education part aspect of it, you have to also spend some time on the spiritual you. The aim of the activity was to inspire participants to strive for excellence in various aspects of their lives. And girls are ready to speak up. I believe that I should have a voice in terms of the society and things that happen to children and teenagers in my age category. Okay, for example, a lot of teenagers are being sexually abused. They don't have parents, some are even being neglected. So they're seeking things outside, let's say, going to guys to get stuff, whereas they should seek other help. There are stuff that happen in life, and by me having a voice and actually telling, like going out to the public, they have other girls like in society that also go through problems and they are afraid to come out. So by me having a voice and actually coming out and talk would give them confidence to speak as well. This year, International Day of the Girl Child was celebrated on October 11th. It marks the beginning of a year-long effort by the United Nations to bring global action and attention to the challenges and opportunities girls face before, during and after crises. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Did you know Tobago has been rated 7th by CNN Travel among 17 islands globally most overlooked as vacation destinations? This island has been hailed as serenity and a petite paradise with an abundance of beaches and mouth-watering cuisine. We move to technology now and a company that's helping local entrepreneurs take their products and services to the world through an enhanced online presence. Omidara Mills chatted with one business owner who's changing the way business is done. Here's more. If you're a business owner offering a product or professional service, you want to get the word out to potential clients via the World Wide Web. But if you don't know where to start, Cooper S Productions can step in and fill that gap. The Tobago-based company, started by Sophia Cooper in 2013, provides online marketing services. Sophia's business has grown to the point where her company was selected by the THA's Business Development Unit to attend this year's Trade and Investment Convention, TIC. The most important thing for us this year was actually to participate in TIC and that was facilitated by BDU. The process was rigorous because it's not just a matter of jumping in and, and being accepted. There was a process of elimination. Um, but I liked that. I liked that we had an opportunity to demonstrate that we had a viable business and that it was worth displaying in an environment like TIC. Sophia's online marketing and communications company also creates web videos, like the Lilly Foundation for Human Development's After 12 is Not Lunch, a 10-part web series that deals with gender-based violence and inequality. It's a very innovative business avenue that attracted a lot of interest at the TIC. I must say that the opportunity to not just interact with possible customers, but I also had some very interesting interactions with competitors. So people who came to the booth and they were wowed by what we were offering and they were asking questions about what we were doing and explaining where they went wrong. So that also created this sort of environment and discussion to sort of see, okay, where are we in the larger context of what we're offering and the service that we're providing. 
Ms. Cooper believes the Trade and Investment Convention is a great platform for increasing awareness of the services Tobago has to offer. The opportunity was one where I don't think most of us, if any, would have been able to participate at TIC had we not gotten that support. Now that we know how we can perhaps benefit even further, then that's on us to sort of generate the, um, the where it all, to ensure that we, we ourselves can create our opportunities to get to another TIC or to another marketing opportunity. Cooper S Productions was one of eight Tobago businesses represented at this year's TIC. This 35-year-old entrepreneur is excited about future collaborations and projects she has lined up. Coming out of TIC, she expects her business to attract many clients beyond the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, Junior Chamber International celebrates 57 years of making a difference in the region. Do stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We are exploring Hibiscus Heights Villa. This property offers last minute specials that would not break your budget. And if you'd like to try your hand at making the perfect curry, you can pre-book a cooking class via email. Now Tobago was the venue for a recent regional conference hosted by Junior Chamber International or JCI. For the past 57 years, this event has been helping the organization develop young Caribbean professionals. Here's how they marked the occasion. In recent years, Tobago has stepped up its efforts to develop the island's youth through education and training, job experience and personal development. So it was perhaps fitting that the island hosted the 57th JCI West Indies National Convention. JCI, the Junior Chamber International, is a non-profit global organization of young people seeking to create positive social change. Each year, the convention brings regional JCs together as the JCI members are known. They connect to share ideas and strengthen ties. This year's theme for the convention was Vision with Action. Vision without action is just a dream. Action without vision just passes time. But vision with action can change the world. And I believe that the reason we are here today is because we all agree that our collective actions, as EVP James from Dominica has said, can really change the world. Let's take advantage of every opportunity that we have here in Tobago. The program has been designed by the COC to ensure that everyone has a lot to go home with and collaboration is key. The convention provides an opportunity for members to reconnect with old friends, meet new friends from various Caribbean islands and expand their network. Junior Chamber International prepares its members to excel in life. They develop skills and knowledge that help them to make smart, informed decisions. I think that the training and the exposure one gets from being involved in an organization like the JCs cannot really be replicated. The culture of the JCs movement distinguishes itself from many other organizations. As a matter of fact, after a stint in a JCs organization, it is really difficult when you go into other organizations to understand and appreciate how they operate. Junior Chamber International is a global organization that is represented in 120 countries. I'm Kirin DeFreitas for Let's Talk to Bigo. The Wormsleys chose this property as their retirement home. They decided to open Hibiscus Heights to visitors so they too can experience the beauty and the culture of Tobago in a tranquil and picturesque setting. In our final story, one event is reliving the island's history while giving visitors a unique cultural experience you will only find in Tobago. We captured all the action. Have a look. 
From its impressive vantage point, Fort King George has a spectacular 360-degree view of the Atlantic Ocean and most of Scarborough. It's the most preserved colonial fort in Tobago and has a calm aura. But centuries ago, this fort was a place of unrest, hosting many battles with Tobago the winner's prize. Now the fort is home to the Tobago Museum, which occupies what was once the Barrack Guardhouse. It's not hard to picture those battles long ago. Recently, Fort King George came to life again with the launching of the Fort King George Interactive Museum Experience. It's an initiative from the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation aimed at enhancing Tobago's tourism product. It allows for us to have a chance to have us to, to experience a snapshot of this fort as it came alive in the 1800s. Uh, this fort was established a long time ago and changed hands two three times and therefore was influenced by the English, the French, the Dutch and of course the enslaved African. The interactive museum will add depth to the visitor experience at the already popular site. Today, ladies and gentlemen, signals the dawn of a new era in Tobago's tourism industry, an era that streamlines and defines this island's tourism product as one centered on our rich heritage, our unique culture, and our distinctly Tobagonian flavor. An era where live the culture becomes more than a tagline, it becomes our blueprint for development. The prisoners' bell tank, barracks, and officers' mess were highlights of the reenactment. The suffering that would have occurred in the artillery men's barracks, which houses the soldiers' hospital, and the ingenuity that demonstrated each time water was retrieved from the bell tank, just to name a few. Indeed, one of Tobago's largest and best preserved forts will become a vehicle through which our island's long and often complicated history is told. So many trod fell. They enforced stern discipline to ensure that all was well. So cruel was the punishment that words could not tell. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we are asking, do you think technology can aid development in Tobago? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. Technology, of course, we need technology. We need to do almost anything. Yes. But you need the people with the right attitude to drive the technology. Without that, technology do work by itself. Technology has actually taken over because what, what people would have normally taken a whole two weeks, three weeks to do, I see technology doing it in like half an hour, an hour. If we bring technology to bear on many of our processes, perhaps we would have a greater result greater outcome. So yes, I strongly recommend, I strongly suspect that by increasing technology, we would be making a great impact. We're in a technology world now. We can't rely on paper again. So if we use the technology to showcase Tobago what we have to offer, and what, so people from other countries who never hear about Tobago, We'd be interested in coming to see what we are talking about. The whole world is moving in technology and in terms of persons at home, you can send them information via text, Facebook, the whole, whole even in school. So our technology is really good and we in the big of course can't be left behind. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Blue Food Festival. We do hope you enjoy.